This video will demonstrate how to set up a new inventory database in the Cloud SKUs system. This is a great video for you to watch even before you subscribe to Cloud SKUs since much of the setup is done from the administration tab. The administration tab is not available to you during your trial, so this will give you some exposure to the functionality associated with it and demonstrate how to prepare your new inventory database. When you initially subscribe to Cloud SKUs, a new domain or database is set up for you during the order process. You will receive your login credentials automatically by email shortly after your order is processed. As we come into the Cloud SKU system for the first time, we can see that we are faced with, with what seems like a daunting task of setting up our database. Actually, I will demonstrate that this is a pretty simple task and can be done in a matter of minutes. We will go to the administration dashboard to take care of our initial configuration. The first thing we want to set up in our database is to define some basic company information and how many physical site locations my company has. To do this, we will open the company information and sites command. You'll notice when you come in here for the first time, the company name will already be filled in with the name you supplied when you placed your order. Feel free to change it if you wish. You can also specify your company website. Now you will see the site list below. By default, one site has been created for you and it is named default site. If you only have one location and want to keep that name, that is fine. Or we can modify the name and supply our physical address for the site. To do this, I will select the default site and click Modify. In our example here, I'm going to be setting up a couple of sites. Cloud SKUs lets us transfer inventory between sites as needed, as well as specify sites on our sales and purchase order. I will create one site that is a warehouse and another site that is a store. I will modify the default site here to be the warehouse. I'll give it a code of WH and type in warehouse for the name. I will also quickly fill in the mailing and shipping information. Now done with that, I'll hit OK. Now I'll create a second site that will be the store. I'll click on the new button and repeat the same process I went through at the warehouse. So now we can see our site list now contains both sites for our company. Now we're going to set up the tax groups. Tax groups define the different types of taxes you charge or are charged. In a new database, one tax group, tax exempt, is already created for you. However, because our store sells merchandise to customers, we'll set up a standard sales tax also. I'll click New to create a new tax group. I'm going to name the tax group Standard Sales Tax. Notice that I'm able to set up both primary and secondary taxes within this group. In our case, we're going to set up the primary sales tax as Wisconsin State Sales Tax with a 5% rate. And because we are in a city that has a local sales tax, we'll add local sales tax as a secondary tax and specify a rate of 2%. We will not apply tax to the shipping charges, and here in the U.S., the state sales tax is not taxed by the local tax. So I'll hit OK, and we'll see our new tax in the list. You can set up as many tax groups as you need, which is nice if you have to accommodate several state sales taxes based on customers' residence. Next, we're going to do a quick review of our billing terms. CloudSkews comes preloaded with standard term statements. However, you can add or remove these as you wish. In our case, these are good, so I'll just dismiss this box. Now we're going to review the shipping methods. Again, Cloud SKUs comes preloaded with a few options. However, in our case, I want to add a trucking company that we contract to the list, so I'll hit the new and simply type Smith Trucking to add that as a new alternative shipping option. Just as we set up sites for our company, each site can define its own stock locations. These locations are later used when creating items. Let's open the Locations Manager. You'll notice at the top that we can select the site to add locations for. In our case, 
we'll choose the warehouse site. Now when we click New, we can define a location within that site. I'll quickly add a few locations for our warehouse. And now I'll do the same thing for the store. Now that we have some of the necessary information set, we're going to run the default settings command, which lets CloudSkews know how you want to handle some of these lookups. Here you can see we can specify the default tracking method, which in our case we're going to use FIFO, first in, first out. Also, you're able to set your default terms and tax groups to be associated with any new vendors or customers. These can be changed on a per customer or per vendor basis at any time, but these settings are just specifying the default settings that will be used when you create new vendors or customers. We can also specify how our freight charges should be dispersed among items on a PO and optionally set up a PO or invoice comment. This comment would appear on any printed PO or invoice. Finally, you can set up the numbering system you want to use for your customer accounts, sales orders, transfer orders, or purchase orders. Usually the numbering system that's set up by default in Cloud SKUs will work just fine, but if you need to match it up with any existing numbering system you have in place, you can do that here. We now have our inventory database all set up and ready for use. The next steps you should follow are to either import existing customers in the cloud SKUs from a CSV file, or you can manually create vendors and items from the purchasing and inventory dashboards respectively. I hope you enjoyed this video covering the important aspects of configuring a new inventory database, and please visit us at www.cloudskews.com for more information and videos on our inventory control system.